So I'm going to open this video with a PSA. If you buy the Ender 3 S1 Pro and you're having trouble getting things to stick to the print bed, what you have to do is go into your slicer, whether you've decided to use Ultimaker Cura or Creality's own slicer that comes with this 3D printer, and you need to go into the machine settings. Open up the settings for this 3D printer, and under the start G code, look for a line that says M28, put a new line after it, and add a line that says M29. It's super easy to remember. You need M28 and M29. That will activate the bed leveling procedure at the start of every print, and that will make it so that no matter what's in memory or no matter what you've done before, it will check the bed and make sure that it knows where it is before it starts to print and your prints will succeed. Now the rest of this video is going to be talking about why me having to say that is really not a good thing. Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor, and if you're new to 3D printing or just want something new to do with 3D printing, you're in the right place, and I hope that you'll stick around. And maybe even come join me on my Discord. It's super easy to find. Just go to discord.3dpprofessor.com, and there you can hang out with an amazing group of people who are doing amazing things with 3D printing and helping others do amazing things with 3D printing as well. I hope to see you there. My friends at Geek Buying sent me this Ender 3 S1 Pro, and you can find a link to them in the description, but I have to kind of apologize to them. I did kind of drag my feet on reviewing this 3D printer, mostly because I had a lot of other 3D printers to review, but also because I didn't think I was going to have anything interesting to say about this 3D printer. But oh boy, was I wrong about that. Also, big thanks to my friends at uh, Sunsekaj. Sunset KJ. I'm not really sure, but they sent me a roll of this absolutely beautiful chameleon blue purple filament. It's sparkly, it's kind of translucent, and as I was testing this 3D printer, it made prints that were absolutely gorgeous and look beautiful from every angle. So thank you to them, and you can find a link to them in the description as well. <laughs> The Ender 3 line of 3D printers is iconic in 3D printing, mostly because it is, at this time, the best-selling line of 3D printers since 3D printing has come to the home markets, and that is mostly due to one factor. It's cheap. And in the past, when I've commented on Ender 3s, my comment has been, listen, if you can't afford anything else, then get an Ender 3 because, yes, the price is indeed right, but if you can pay a little bit more, you will get a much better 3D printer. And for the most part, that's true, but I feel I have to amend that statement just a little bit. Because inevitably, when I talk about a different 3D printer that's a little bit more expensive, but is such a great experience to use, somebody in my comment section says, why would I want to buy that 3D printer when I can buy two Enders for the same price? And yes, fair, but you got to keep in mind, this isn't about you. Okay, it might be about you if you are a new 3D printer user, but if you've been using 3D printers for a while, if you understand the ins and outs of how these machines function, then yeah, the Ender 3 is, is a good 3D printer. And props to Creality. The hardware on this machine is honestly top notch, especially for the price. They have done an amazing job of sourcing cheap but really good good components in their 3D printer. And using the Ender 3 S1 Pro, I, I truly believe I have never used a 3D printer better built for the price than the Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro. It's a solid piece of hardware. And from the hardware standpoint, no complaints. So if you don't need a lot of help in using a 3D printer and you just want solid, good hardware, yeah, Honestly, the Ender 3 S1 Pro fits the bill perfectly. Just going off the spec sheet, the Ender 3 S1 Pro is an impressive machine. It's basically if you took an Ender 3 and had all the upgrades that people usually do to them 
already on them, saving you that time and money. And I appreciate that. It's got the direct drive. It's got the auto bed leveling, the removable build plate, the filament out sensor. It even has a really nice touch screen interface. There's a lot on this machine to appreciate. Pink. Pink. But the Ender 3 is not a good 3D printer to recommend to people who have never done 3D printing, who are brand new to it, because, well, let's dive into it. To start with, there's the quick installation guide that comes with this 3D printer sitting right on top of the packaging where you're gonna find it. And you look at this and you think, this is a pretty good book. This is gonna walk people through how to use this 3D printer, but ah, not so. Because once you open it, and check it out, you realize it is exactly five pages, and I'm counting front and back here before it switches to another language and repeats that nine times. This is not a big booklet that will walk you through how to use a 3D printer. This is four pages, three pages of print and a bunch of waste. And being fair to Creality, I understand the problem that they're trying to solve, and I'm sympathetic to it. I get that you're going to be sending this out to the world, and you want people to be able to get through it. But this, this is not enough to get people started on using the 3D printer. Let me walk you through these pages. Page number one is a go here if you need help, and we'll talk about that later. Page two is here's the stuff that you're going to find in here. Page three and four are how to assemble it in half of page five. And then the last page says this right here at the bottom. Step seven, leveling. Please follow the steps of auxiliary leveling, auto leveling, Z-axis compensation for leveling. That's it. That's all that they tell you to get started. Not a word about loading a slicer, not a word about how to configure that slicer, nothing else in here about getting started with this 3D printer. In fact, not even a bit about go to the SD card and start a print. Here's how you load fill, none of that. It says go to the leveling procedure and level your bed. Fine, I'll have a leveled 3D printer if that leveling procedure was actually good, but I won't be able to make a 3D print. Do you see what I'm getting at here? This documentation stops far short of where it needs to. It needs to walk people through the process of using this 3D printer from unboxing to making their own 3D print from something that they've downloaded online. Fortunately, there is another document that you can find. It's on the SD card in a zip. And let me just say, as somebody who works in the maker space, as somebody who sees people come in and out all day, as somebody who has taught people to use 3D printing, putting things in a zip file might as well be throwing them in the ocean for half of the people out there. People don't know what to do with a zip file. People don't know how to unzip it. And if they do double click on it in Windows and go into the zip file, they don't understand why they can't just load the files in their slicer without extracting. They don't know how to extract. And the documentation on this SD card says, don't extract this zip onto the SD card. Like, that's confusing to people. Why not just have this unzipped and on the card where people can find it? It's just one more step of obstruction between them and using your 3D printer. You gotta get those out of the way for people. But once you find that document, admittedly this document, which can have a few more pages because it's going through for one specific language, does cover a little bit more useful information. It goes through assembly again. It has a lot more detail on how to do the leveling procedure. That's good. And it does go through installing and using the slicer. So if you can find this document, it does help you go through to the process of starting a 3D print from the slicer, which is good, except that it's still incomplete. As I said at the start of this video, I was having a hard time getting things to stick to the bed, and I thought that I was just doing the bed leveling wrong. But 
you know, let's be honest here. I've leveled a lot of beds in my time, even with automatic bed leveling. And this one, I felt like it just wasn't saving the settings as I was doing the bed leveling. It, it wasn't helping. It was confusing to me and I know what I'm doing. So I found a video on YouTube that walked you through how to level this 3D printer. And most of the video, I was like, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I did that. I mean, I'm not a dummy. I know what I'm doing. But then at the end, it said you got to edit the start G code. And this is the thing. The edit that you need to make to the start G code doesn't exist on Ultimaker Cura. And it doesn't exist on their Creality branded version of Ultimaker Cura that they ship with the 3D printer on the SD card, nor does it exist on the version of Cura that is on their website. They have neglected an important thing that will not allow this 3D printer to work if you don't get it right. And I am going, how? But then I realize that's the Creality way. Get it to like 80, 90% of the way there and then let the community deal with everything else and no no absolutely not okay so let's say that you want to change the filament on your ender 3 s1 pro something simple right no problem i've currently got it loaded with some matter hackers pet g and i want to load it up with this pla from sun techie it's this beautiful i think it's called chameleon purple because it's all sparkly and stuff love it beautiful all right, no problem. We go over to the menu, right? We go into the ready menu. Now we need to adjust the nozzle temperature. And because it's a high temp filament, I'm gonna run it up to 230, okay? All right, nozzle's up to temperature. So now I just have to push the, because there's no, there's no option on the menu for like, you know, any sort of fancy. I have to push the lever and release it by hand, which is hard to do with one hand, but you know, who cares? Who, who wants to have a filament loading and unloading procedure? <laughs> Not me. All right, so now I need to drop the temperature. That, or let's say, let's say I'm done. I wanna, I wanna cool it off. So I hit the menu. And what do I? A, a zero, right? Zero is the correct option. Nope, it still wants to heat it up to 230. Well, okay, maybe I could just turn it down to a low temperature, like 220. Nope, won't change. Uh, 100. Nope, won't change. Well, uh, can I bring it down to like 180? Yeah, it'll let me bring it down to 180, but how do I do a cool off procedure on here? It doesn't, so if you want to cool off your nozzle, you can't do, you just, you better start printing right now because yeah, yeah, just, just or just let it sit there hot and cross link your filament, you know? That's, that's great. Yeah, 180 is the lowest I can go. Beautiful, perfect design, wouldn't change a thing. <sighs> Stupid. I've heard sympathizers say, well, what do you expect? What do you expect for a 3D printer this cheap? And no, 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 no. What I expect for the most popular and best selling 3D printer of all time at this time is that they would amateurize all those sales into making sure that it's a good experience for first time users out of the box without a lot of effort. I don't think that that's unreasonable. And I realize now this is why there are so many Ender 3 clones out there. They are creating their own competition because some enterprising engineering minded person gets an Ender 3 and goes, you know, if I just do what they did and then take it that last step, well, I could be eating their lunch. I could be drinking their milkshake. So this puts me in a really weird position because at this point I'm telling you don't buy an Ender 3 but then people are going to ask me well fine what should I buy if not that and I don't have a good answer I mean obviously if you can afford it then get one of the 3D printers to have a better user experience either an Adventurer 3 or the X Maker those are fantastic beginner 3D printers right now but if you want something in the price range of an Ender I can't think of anything that has a really good answer to that one. There is the Mingda Magician. It is about the same price and its documentation is much, much better, but it really is not very good for loading and unloading the filament until you update the firmware. So if you're okay with updating the firmware, then yeah, I could recommend this one. But again, I'm giving you a 3D printer 
with homework and if you're not up for updating the firmware which honestly isn't that difficult just put a file on the sd card and boot it up but if that worries you then obviously this isn't a great choice for that one i like it but you know if we're thinking about absolute beginners i don't know there's the king rune kp3s1 i really like this one it has some fantastic hardware linear rails love it the filament loading and unloading is still frustratingly manual and it has to go through a weird feed tube on the side that's not ideal but you know if you can look past those and the price for this one is fantastic i i do still recommend this but again it's it's not a home run it's not a slam dunk it's not a perfect answer but it's a pretty good one. Oh, there's the Sovol sv06 i actually had a pretty good time with the sv06 and the hardware on it is pretty good yeah the filament loading and unloading is is a little bit manual but their documentation is better than the ender experience so yeah i could recommend the sv06 it's it's a good one don't do the sv07 though i didn't have a great time with that one but you can watch my video on that if you want but yeah soval i guess is a good answer i don't know it just feels like there's no slam dunk home run answer to this question of if not this then what there are a lot of options and a lot of them are much better for beginners so check them out and maybe if you have an idea in the comments of a 3d printer that you would recommend for people who have never done 3d printing before then sound off let me know let me know where to check it out because the hunt is still on for the best 3d printer to recommend to absolute beginners at a budget friendly price but that's it for this video i want to thank you very much for watching and remind you that you are a child of god so you're special to me so take care of yourself and if you can someone else too i'll see you next time i wonder if anybody's going to notice that i got my hair cut for a couple of segments in here we'll see